Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, I'm going to be answering some questions on my quote-unquote car collection. I hate using the word car collection because it makes me sound like a rich douchebag, but anyways, I happen to own about $400,000 worth of cars, and so obviously, because I post those cars on YouTube, I get asked a bunch of questions like, how do you afford the cars? Do you have payments on the cars? What's insurance like on the vehicles? All of that kind of stuff, and so I'm going to try to answer everything in today's video, and so with that being said, before we get the video, as always, if you're going to save time and money, the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. So the first car that I currently own is a 2022 Ford Mustang Shelby GT500. And well, if you can't tell by the giant carbon fiber wing there in the back, this one has the carbon fiber track pack. And so the original MSRP on this car was about $103,000. Now the next car is my wife's Land Rover Defender. And this one has a bunch of the cool off-road stuff like the tires, you guys can see it's got the snorkel, it's got the rack, it's got the lock boxes, and it's got the ladder there on the back that I've actually used, not because I was camping, but because I just wanted to use it. Now, original MSRP on this car was about $85,000, but I added the Explorer pack, which gives you stuff like the snorkel and all that. That was another like five-ish thousand dollars. And so let's just say that the MSRP on this one's about $90,000. I realize I forgot to give the model year on this one, 2023 Defender, and it's an SE, I'm pretty sure, for the like packaging on it. Anyways, the next one is my Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 392. This is a 2022, and this was actually originally supposed to be my wife's car, hence why it's bright pink. But then, uh, obviously, we had a baby, and this is not a great uh, family car, and so that's why the Defender came around. Um, but anyways, this one's stickered for about $86,000 brand new. And then finally, we have the trusty workhorse, my Gen 3 Ford Raptor with the 37 performance package. It was actually one of the first ones ever sold brand new with the 37 package. And well, this one originally stickered for about $82,000, which makes me feel really cool because a 2023 Gen 3 Raptor, this is a 21 if you're wondering, with the same options that I have is like $90,000 and you don't even get a heated steering wheel anymore because well, yeah, Ford supply constraints, all that. And before we get into the total, yes, I can get into every single car except the GT500 because well, I'm skinny enough to fit in between the cars, but I do need to note that to get the Wrangler out, you have to either move the Defender or the Raptor, but you can pull the Defender out, you can pull the Raptor out, and if you could get into the GT500, you could hypothetically uh, pull it out. So like, I'm, I'm, I turned a three car garage into a four car garage. You gotta, you gotta give me credit. If you add up the MSRP of all of the cars, it comes out to be about $360,000. And then the tax rate here in Utah is about 7.25%, which means that you have to tack on another like $25,000 in taxes, which gets us up to roughly $400,000. And then, like I said, I do happen to have another car on order. Um, that one's going to sticker for about $87,000. I believe. Um, obviously, if I do end up getting my allocation, and that's what jumps us up to closer to about $500,000, which is absolutely disgusting. Now, some of you might be wondering exactly what I paid for the cars, and well, I can tell you what I paid for three of them, but I can't tell you what I paid for one of them because of the deal that I have with the dealership. Anyways, for this GT500, I paid MSRP, which is pretty crazy because in my market, GT500s with the track pack go for 10, 20, sometimes even $30,000 over MSRP, especially in colors like what I have, the Oxford White, it's a really popular color. Um, with the Defender, um, same thing, didn't pay any markup on that. With the Wrangler, I actually got this for under um, original MSRP, and then the Raptor is the one that I can't talk about. Um, but what I can tell you is that I got a very, very, very good deal considering how crazy the market is on those. Now, the next question that I get asked all the time is with taxes. People assume that because I'm constantly buying and selling cars all the time that I'm losing a ton of money in taxes because Utah has a tax rate of like 7.25%, but that's just not reality. I either trade in the cars or I sell the cars through a dealership so that I can always get a tax credit because with Utah's tax system, if you trade a car for another car, then you don't pay full taxes on the car that you buy. So like if I trade in a $50,000 vehicle for another $50,000 vehicle, the taxes get zeroed out. And so obviously I use that system to my advantage to save a ton of money. So when I add a vehicle to the fleet, yes, that does basically mean that I had to pay a bunch of taxes. But whenever I do the trades, I'm paying very minimal in terms of taxes, or sometimes I'm not paying anything just depending on the values of the vehicles. Now, the next question that I get asked all the time is what are my car payments on the vehicles? And so let's just go vehicle by vehicle and talk about the payment that I have on them. So starting with the GT500, my payment per month on this car is 
zero because I own it outright. Now next is the Land Rover Defender and well my payment per month on this car is also zero. And then with the Wrangler my payment per month is 12, just kidding it's zero. And finally, you might have guessed it at this point, my payment on the Gen 3 Raptor is also $0 per month. Now, I know a lot of people watching this are probably not going to believe that all these cars are paid off because I'm only 25 years old, but I will explain that at the end of the video. The next thing that I quickly want to dive into is going to be insurance cost with the vehicles and then also maintenance cost as well. So my insurance premium to insure all four vehicles Full coverage, nothing funny happening is $4,000 per year. So just over $300 per month. And again, that is all of the vehicles. I pay the premium once a year because the insurance company gives me a discount if I basically pay all of the payments upfront rather than doing it on a monthly basis. And then when it comes to maintenance, I don't know on the GT500 yet because I just got it and I haven't had to take it in. But my assumption is it's probably not going to be super expensive because it's an American-made car. And my experience with high-performance American-made cars is that they're usually pretty cheap to maintain, at least while they're under warranty. And then similar story with the Defender. I haven't had to take it in yet because we just got it um, at the beginning of this year. But I do want to state that luxury car dealers obviously have higher uh, service rates. And so I imagine the maintenance cost on this is probably going to be somewhere around a thousand dollars per year. Maybe it's even more. I don't know, but that's just my guess. Now with the Wrangler, it has been dirt cheap to maintain it. It only costs like a hundred dollars per year for me to maintain it because it's just oil changes and tire rotations at this point. And then the Gen 3 Raptor is a similar situation to the Wrangler where it's probably about $100 per year between the oil changes and the tire rotations. Now the last big cost is going to be fuel for all of the vehicles. Now I don't pay nearly as much as I should in fuel costs and that's because I get these manufacturer cars. I've been very open about this on the channel. Um, I usually get like one or two per week. It just depends on the week. Sometimes I don't have a manufacturer car and how those manufacturer cars work is they get dropped off at my house with a full tank of gas. If I go through the full tank of gas, then obviously I pay for gas after that point, but the first tank is on the manufacturer. However, even with my gas partially being covered by press cars, I still spend at least about four to $5,000 per year on fuel. And that's just because I drive so many miles. I drive like 30 to 40,000 plus miles per year. I mean, my Gen 3 Raptor has over 11 thousand miles on it this is supposed to be like a weekend toy this wrangler and it's got 4500 miles on it and these two are brand new so they don't have a lot um, but i'm sure the miles will start to rack up pretty quick on both of the cars the defender and the gt500 now the last big cost is going to be depreciation on the vehicles and while this actually hasn't been a big cost for the channel so Prior to the pandemic, I was basically breaking even on the cars because I would buy them cheap and then I would sell them right before I was about to lose money on them. And then the pandemic happened, car prices went through the roof. And so then I started making a bunch of money on the vehicles. And now that the car market has stabilized and kind of more normalized, if that makes sense, I expect to go back to what I was doing prior to the pandemic where I would basically just break even on the vehicles, which I feel like is a huge win for me as a business owner because I can buy these vehicles, make videos on these vehicles, and then the videos make money and then I can sell the vehicle and not lose anything. And so then it's like, I don't know, I just see that as a win for me. I still go into every single car purchase with the expectation that I could lose 10 to 20% over my ownership experience, but that's just, it hasn't happened at all for the like four years that I've been doing this channel. And so it doesn't take a math wizard to realize that I'm really not spending all that much money on these vehicles. Again, I don't have any interest on the vehicles because I don't have any auto loans. So that is completely zeroed out. My insurance is about $4,000 per year. Again, in fuel costs, I would estimate it's about four to $5,000 per year. And then maintenance, well, until I bought this luxury mobile was usually around just a few hundred dollars per year. And so I'm spending like, you know, eight, nine, maybe $10,000 per year to drive a bunch of fun, cool cars, which I know to some of you that might sound expensive, but like, Spending $10,000 per year on transportation when my business literally revolves around transportation, I feel like that's a really low cost. Like $10,000 per year to run my entire business, I see that as dirt cheap. Now, before I answer the question of where I got the money to pay for all this, I quickly want to talk about my lifestyle outside of cars because I think that's important to basically put this all into perspective. So I don't really spend money outside of cars. Like I spend money on food and that's about it. Like I don't have nice clothes. I don't go out to eat or anything like that. I just spend more money on food because I buy really like good healthy food, which is a little bit more expensive than like, I don't know, a bag of potato chips, for example. And so my life is pretty minimalist. So that means that, well, I have more money to spend on stuff that I really enjoy, like, you know, cars, 
like this. Um, however, I do have another really big expense outside of the cars and that is going to be my house. So my mortgage payment plus utilities and everything comes out to be about $4,000 per month, which makes me a little bit sick because I remember when I didn't even make like half of that and that wasn't like, that was just several years. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy how fast time goes. Um, but I don't feel too bad about that because well, rents keep increasing. And I mean, there's a lot of places where people are paying three, four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000 plus in rent per month. And so, you know, obviously, a house that will hopefully go up in value. We'll see what happens because the housing market is doing some crazy stuff. I, I think it's pretty reasonable that I have that. But by the way, that's the only debt that I have. I don't have any credit card debt. I don't have any student loans. Again, I don't have any debt on the cars. And so the fact that I only have a mortgage, I, I feel like that's, I feel like I'm doing pretty okay. So let's talk about where the money came from to pay for all of these vehicles. The first source is when I worked in sales. I averaged over six figures per year when I worked in sales for three years. And I was very smart with the money for the most part. I did make some dumb purchases, but they were relatively small. And so because I saved a bunch of that money, that allowed me to invest some of the money. And it obviously allowed me to have a savings account, which allowed me to take the risk of starting this YouTube channel. And this YouTube channel has been amazingly successful. This is something that I've downplayed for a very long time because the whole success thing just makes me feel uncomfortable, but the channel has done really well. And it's done really well for a number of reasons. First off, I work extremely hard. I have consistently posted a video every single day for years at this point. And right now, like I, on average for the main channel, I post like three, sometimes four videos per day. And there's not a lot of channels that can say that they do anything near that, especially being a channel that is run by a singular person. I do all of my editing. I do all of the thumbnails. I do every, like everything is me. And then on top of that, I have applied my minimalist mentality to this channel, which I feel like is pretty uncommon here on YouTube because everyone thinks that you have to spend a ton of money on a channel for it to be successful on YouTube. And that's just not reality. The only like reoccurring cost that I have on the channel is basically fuel. Now I choose to spend money on different things because I think that those projects will lead to fun videos that might not necessarily be the most profitable, but I really enjoy them. But like the average video that I post on the channel where I'm just going out and reviewing a car, it just costs my time, it costs my effort, and it costs a little bit of gas if I happen to be driving one of my cars. If I'm driving one of these cars, well, it's it's whatever manufacturer that car is owned by that's paying for the fuel. And I think this is something that a lot of YouTubers should like, I, I don't know, think about because you can make really good content without having to spend a ton of money, which means that you can make a business that is a lot more sound from a financial perspective, which means that you can make videos for a lot longer and you can, in my opinion, make better content because like when I make videos at this point, I'm not making them because I feel like I have to make them. I'm making them because I want to make them. And so yes, an automotive YouTube channel with only 200,000 subscribers can do very well financially if you know how to run the YouTube business thing. I think there's this like myth out there that you have to have millions of subscribers to make a lot of money on YouTube and that's just not reality. If you know what videos to make, when to post them, you know how to arrange ads on those videos, how to attract certain audiences, like there's a lot that goes into it, but once you learn how the system works, like Again, you can do really, really well. And so like, I don't know, if you guys want me to talk about this stuff more, I can, but I find it uh, less exciting than just making car reviews. So I'll probably continue to just focus on car reviews, but that is how much all of these cars cost me, um, you know, from, I guess, like an initial cost perspective, the taxes, the maintenance, all of that stuff. And that's how I have paid for the cars. Believe it or not, it is YouTube. Again, this channel has like 100, almost 130 million views on it. And those views are very targeted to niche audiences, which means that, well, that 130 million views equals a lot more advertising dollars than people realize. And so, yeah, see ya.